Disclaimer, I'm sick and recovering from top surgery and still have itchy and leaking irritating drains in, so please excuse how I may look or sound, etc. Some context, I met and got with a man named Harley when I was 21, we got married when I was 25, he died 6 days after I turned 32, the day he died was February 16th, 2021, 3 years ago. Before I met him, I had been abused by an ex, by friends, etc. I was also born with factual association, and I have a large hemangioma on the back of my right leg, from my knee to my right labia. Yes, I said labia, I'm a trans man. I also have multiple scars from surgeries, as well as a colostomy and a hernia. Again, don't even ask how many times I've had a hernia, this one appeared before I could even recover. From my last hernia repair surgery that I needed because it had gotten so kinked I couldn't eat, and I'm sure will eventually happen again. Of course the hemangioma has always been there. I'd wear shorts and skirts to school anyway, even though that made it visible. I'd get stares, questions, people avoiding me like it was a disease. It's not contagious, it's just a tumor. Not cancer, obviously, but it is a tumor. One that I live with for my entire life because it's too big and deep for them to do anything about. They tried, it failed. I also have scoliosis that I was born with and a hand deformity for whatever they count, but the hemangioma is the big one. Due to being disabled and deformed, I got the message growing up, I'm ugly. In terms of being trans, I came out initially at age 30. Before he died, he knew that I'm trans and that I wanted to transition, even though I didn't get to it medically until after he died. I had socially changed my name and pronouns before he passed. He didn't bat an eye, just accepted me. I just turned 35, by the way. Like I said, he died six days after my birthday. My birthday was the 10th. Even as he was being taken away by the ER, dying, he still called me he, much to the confusion of the paramedics. I learned that, that what's on the outside isn't what matters. That much is true, but I barely scratched the surface. I hope this is enough context, but if not, whatever. This is me. I wrote a letter to my husband a few days ago. I wrote it, but it is now February 16th, a few days after midnight, and I'm going to read it and share it because reasons. To my husband, I developed a mantra, let me be physically ugly in peace, it's not what matters, parentheses. You'd always respond with, you're not ugly. At best, I could believe to you I wasn't ugly, no one else, except my mom. But to everyone else I knew or thought I did, that I was ugly. I'd, specific, I'd specify physically, and that what mattered was that I wasn't ugly on the inside, who I am. But just let me be physically ugly in peace. Hashtag ugly pride. And I felt so weird saying it on the internet because none of my deformities are on my face. And that's generally all I would show. It turns out being trans, deformed, disabled, and autistic are all extremely intertwined for me in some ways. And I had just learned that I was autistic very shortly before he passed too. So that didn't help. Dysphoria prevented me from showing too much, even when I didn't have the words, but the autistic side of me screamed that I, that meant I was lying to everyone. My face isn't ugly after all, that much I knew, so to only show that and not the rest of me, my deformities, the hemangioma, felt like one huge lie. Especially when I'd see people with hemangioma on their faces, or otherwise in places they couldn't hide it. I didn't want to hide mine in public, but it's typically frowned upon to walk around in society with no pants. And naturally, it being on my leg means it's usually covered. Not out of shame, just because it's not appropriate to run around without pants. But because of that, I felt like a huge lie because, fully clothed, I look pretty normal. It's only naked you see that I am not. Normal. Doesn't even exist. But that's not the point. Something a friend, E, recently said to me made something click. I wish it had clicked while you were still here. I'm not going to go into it, but I realized I never really understood Beauty is in the eye of the beholder like I thought I did. Society hates the deformed, the conventionally ugly. My autism makes me feel like I'm lying because I'm not ashamed to be deformed. But dysphoria made me want to hide my curves because I couldn't stand having them. They felt all wrong. Not ugly like the hemangioma, but wrong as in the wrong body. This is my story, okay? No one else's. I'd say that mantra so often. Let me be ugly in peace. In parentheses, physically, and it's not what matters. Hashtag ugly pride. It helped a little, I think, but you went past that and I couldn't see it. I couldn't see what you saw in me, and I now realize it was mostly because gender dysphoria was in the way. 
Now that I'm on T and just had top surgery eight days ago, I'm beginning to see what you saw in me years ago. I have been feeling so weird the past year now that I'm seriously loving my face, my voice, getting hairier, feeling like myself, finally in my 30s after decades of dysphoria. Getting compliments felt weird because on one hand, I like them, they are affirming. My friends telling me I'm handsome and in regards to my face, I believed them. But then that's complicated for two reasons. One, my autism is screaming, LIAR! Your face is handsome, sure, but what about the rest of you? And more importantly, what about your moral? That looks aren't what matters. You know better than the rest of shallow society, after all. For liking my face. For liking a compliment. For thinking something about me wasn't ugly. And liking it. It's so confusing. And thanks to interoception issues, which I'm just now beginning to see I have, which, thanks autism, you're making everything complicated, I couldn't figure out what my issue was. Until something my friend E said. I might have had pieces, but I didn't have all of them, so I couldn't see the whole picture, and nothing made sense. I don't know how much all this will make sense to anyone else, but I think it's worth sharing. You were right, 100%. I'm not ugly. I never was. I needed to transition to see that. I want to say I'm sorry to you for a million reasons. You saw things in me that I couldn't even feel. I had abusive asshole words stuck in my heads, in my head that even if I said I didn't believe them, they were still stuck there, making me wonder. Were they right? Was he right? No. Neither was I, despite thinking I was being progressive. I thought hash hashtag ugly pride was being progressive. After all, physical looks don't matter in regards to if someone is a good person or not. And that's true. But I wasn't being progressive about it. You were. You saw I was never ugly, and not just because you loved me, but because you saw me and you saw it shining through. I can't even put it into words, and I'm writing this, and I'm better at writing than speaking off the cuff, but I just can't find the words to do it justice. Anyone who matters in my life will see me for the man I am, and that, yeah, I'm fucking handsome. I'm deformed, disabled, and handsome. So much can't hurt me anymore now that I can see that. I didn't think about the fact that being called ugly, no matter what, would still hurt. When I was saying hashtag ugly pride and that may be ugly in peace. I thought stuff like disabled and cute was dumb at the time it was going on. Because I thought I was above it. I wasn't. I was below it. I was hurting in more ways than one. I thought my stupid mantra was empowering. All I was doing was tearing myself down. And you saw that. And I couldn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it took me so damn long. And that you're gone. I had so many doubts in my mind that I never should have, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for so much. I truly believe you are still here with me, though, and I don't give a fuck if people think I'm crazy. As long as I'm not hurting anyone, that's all I care about here. I believe you're still here with me, and I know you're proud of me. I know if you could see me now, you'd be proud of me. It's bittersweet. I am so glad we had the time together that we did, and if you were still here, I'd tell you sorry for so many things. <laughs> And you'd probably just told me and be happy that finally, I could see myself as you did. You'd say I should have red hair, that I have a fiery personality. You're right, but fuck if I know how you saw that all those years ago. When I was lost to depression and thoughts of unaliving myself. I mean, I know it did show itself at times, but so much of the time I was just lost. And you loved me and saw me for who I am anyway. You saw things in me that I couldn't even feel at the time. Before I started T last year, I knew I had two choices. I only had two left. One, unalive myself. Or two, transition. And here I am now, one year on T and recovering from top surgery. I choose to live. And now I can see what you saw, what my friends see. That being deformed doesn't make me ugly. I'm handsome and the right people can see that. If someone can't, that's their problem. Beauty isn't skin deep. Anyone who thinks it is needs help. And also dysphoria is an asshole, and it's real. No one told me being dis disabled, deformed, autistic, and trans would be so complicated. But it is. But I know I see what you saw. I am beautiful, I am handsome, I am worthy. And now so much can no longer hurt me, because I know it deep in my soul. Saying I'm not ugly isn't shallow. Saying I'm handsome isn't shallow. It's so much more than that. Words fail me. Early March in 2021, just a couple weeks after you died, I think I saw you. Sort of. 
I even wrote about it on my blog the next day, so I have a record of it. I have been having, I had been having a nightmare, and I woke up with my head going back and forth a little after 4am. I turned and looked beside the bed, and I swear I saw an apparition, if that's the right word. Anyway, but I'll explain. There wasn't details, like facial features or anything. But it was human-shaped, and I believe about your height. The outline looked like it could have been you. It was just white, like mist, but distinct. I'm not sure how to describe it. But I know what I saw. I kept blinking, hoping it'd get clearer or possibly go away, and tell me I was just seeing something that wasn't there. But it stayed. As I blinked again and again, and even waved my hand at it and threw it, and said, Harley? Harley, is that you? It just stayed as it was, seemingly a bit bent over looking at me. And I swear, someone woke me up. I felt it. It might have been minutes of that before it faded away. And I couldn't get back to sleep for hours. I had been having a lot of trouble sleeping, but I wasn't scared. I just couldn't get back to sleep. I've never had a paranormal experience that I know of, and while I do believe in the paranormal, I normally want to try and find a logical explanation first, but I truly believe that was you, and that you woke me up because I was having a nightmare, and you were watching over me. This might seem all over the place to others, but I don't care. This is part of my story, and I think it's important to share. Harley, I want to tell you I'm sorry for so many reasons. I'm thinking about you now. I think you'd just be happy that finally I see myself. I really see myself. I thought you were right all along. I hope you know how much I loved you, and always will, and how much I am so glad for the time we had, and how sorry I am for that stupid mantra. I'll never say it again.